Okay, so we're back with another question here from the Junior Cycle 2023 exam uh, for graphics. So we're going to start looking at question two today. Um, and we're going to start off with 2A. Okay, so 2A is this Lego question. Uh, it's assessing your orthographic principles or your spatial awareness ability. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and concentrate on this back surface here. So we're going to flip over to Anshape. And we're just going to have a look at this back surface here. I've made it in 3D. When I look down on top of it in plan, you'll see that the red surface will be covered up by the green surface. So that's that red surface down the left will be covered up by the green surface. Now I'll zoom out a little bit here. Um, and then you'll see that the yellow piece is on the bottom part of that green surface. Okay, blue is in the middle. The red surface is, uh, sorry, the yellow surface is at the bottom. And then the red surface or the red little block of Lego is covered up by the green one. So flip back to isometric, that's the view you've been given, and then back to plan, this is what we're trying to assess basically, this is what we're trying to get a hold of. Red surface at the back is covered up by the green one, yellow one is um, to the, the bottom of the green surface. So when we flip back to our exam paper now, again, we're concentrating on this back surface. So the only option for us so that back red surface has been covered up is the third option. We can see the red surface here and here. So it has to be the third option. So we're just gonna go ahead and tick that one there. Again, easy marks and we'll move on. Okay, so on to question 2B. Um, there's no right way or wrong way to do this really. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the tops of the blue bricks as kind of datum lines almost. Um, and I'm just going to sketch these lines across. So this would be something to do if you're struggling with kind of visualizing what this question is actually asking you to do. Okay, it's asking you to fill up the wall with the, the blue bricks basically. So we know by the two bricks lying on the ground, they are four cylinders long by two cylinders wide. So one of them will fit in here basically in the gap in the middle. And then down below on our base, we'll see that there's kind of a line in the center and I'm just going to follow that guy up and that will give us the position of the second and third brick that we need to fill this wall in. So this is kind of assessing your spatial awareness, your spatial ability, and just how quickly you can recognize how many bricks are needed. So um, I just sped this part up because it's quite long, but um, just do whatever you know, you're know you kind of, you're comfortable with, I suppose. Like if you can just eyeball it and you know exactly where you're going, grand, if you need a bit of a hand, you can do what I'm doing here. Okay, so we're getting to the end of our counting now, um, and as we've established, or as you might know, or not, might know, or might even be able to see, there's 10 blocks in total needed to fill up this wall. Okay, so 10 blocks in total to complete the wall. That's that question done. Again, like we said, easy enough marks, and we'll put on. Okay, so our next question is our sketch question. Um, it is basically this shape here, the one that I'm circling now. And we know that from our plan and elevation. And in our question, it's asking us to produce a pictorial view. Okay, so a pictorial view always means 3D. And it has to be 3D. Okay, so you could do isometric, you could do whatever. Um, but the fact that I have an isometric view here on my sheet, I may as well just try re try copy that over here. Now it's facing the other way, but that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. So I'm gonna go in and sketch on my 3D crow's foot. Um, and then take it from there. So we know it's facing the other way from our plan and elevation. Um, obviously our circular part, our highest part of our shape is to the right, um, whereas in our uh, yellow piece over on the far side of the sheet is on the left part. So we know that it's, it's uh, facing the other way. So I've gone ahead and drawn my kind of um, rectangular prism here and I'm just going to do this back surface to allow my, my kind of cylinder sit on top of it. Okay so you might notice when I'm sketching I'm actually sketching quite fast I haven't sped this up at all and um, this is normal speed so you might notice that I'm sketching quite quick um, and I'm just trying to get those lines down onto my sheet as well as possible and then I'm going to go around it with a heavy pen afterwards and um, I'm just going to use a little X here to find the center of my uh, surface at the back and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a rough uh, square there and then my circle inside of it um, for my cylinder and then again make a 
a kind of square base prism above it for my cylinder here at the back. Um, but like I said, I'm kind of sketching kind of quite quickly initially and then I'm going to slow it down with a little bit more accuracy then to finish it off. Okay, so I've got my trusty black pen and again, this is where the speed kind of comes way down. Now, I will say I am moving quick anyway, um, but as you can see, I'm kind of building up multiple lines, going really, really fine on my black pen, on my heavy pencil here, and I'm just building up lines to make my uh, shape stand out, okay? Uh, I feel as though with doing these sorts of questions, practice definitely does help. Um, but if you can try get as many lines down as possible um, it's just gonna allow you to be a little bit more accurate and don't like even there like I've kind of lines all over the place in my cylinder don't be overly worried about getting a perfect the more lines you kind of put on the better your shape will look and then when you go and you color a shaded which is asking us to do in the in, in the question um, it'll kind of stand out Okay, so what I'm doing here now is I'm trying to identify where my light source is coming from. So I just picked this random spot here. So I know that this surface that my head is covering up is going to be the heaviest surface. So I'm going to spend most of my time with that there. Um, again, moving quickly, but um, being really kind of definitive or uh, accurate with my lines or accurate as possible with my lines. Going in super heavy here because I know that this is going to be the darkest point. I'm just going to shade it up to the corner of that surface. Okay, this is much, much lighter. So again, just removing the amount of pressure on my hand. And then I'm just going to draw in kind of the shadow. I'm a little bit off now, my, my light source now, just to be fair, but I'm just drawing in the shadow of that cylinder. So I, I, I know myself that that's going to be the shadow of the cylinder. I can go heavy there. This is going to be the direct point of the cylinder as well. And then going again, removing the kind of pressure on your pencil as you go around to the light side. So that's the shadow of the cylinder there, that's grand. Um, and like I said, you're kind of just, you're kind of just lifting off pressure and putting pressure on then depending on how heavy you want it to be. You might see me as well just kind of rubbing the sheet with my finger there, just trying to blend the two colors together. It's something that works with some pencils, it's something that doesn't work with other pencils and all honestly hasn't really worked with this pencil here. Um, but you're trying to just blend that together to make it look like a like a color rather than uh, like a colored plastic piece rather than you actually coloring it in. So again, blending that kind of surface there, um, um, and and just kind of going around it all with the pencil. And like I said, you can see I'm mean, kind of working quite quick, but I've just removed an awful lot of pressure off my my pencil there as I go. Okay, so uh, question two, part D now. Uh, this is probably my favorite question. Uh, it's very accessible to everyone. It's pretty handy and you use an awful lot of graphical techniques in doing so. So it's basically telling us that this shape has to be enlarged so that AB goes to B1, or that B goes to B1 basically, it becomes bigger. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a vertical line from B1, okay? Because we know that the line AB and then B straight up, that looks like an entry angle to me, it is so we can go measure it if we really want it, but it is. Um, that line will also stay parallel regardless what you do in an enlargement. Uh, a is staying where it is, so I'm just gonna draw a line from A through that point there above B, and that will give us the new size, the new size of that side of our shape there like so. Okay, so again, trusty black pen, heavy and like there like that. Okay, so that has made it, um, the length there that is how tall the side will be when it increases to size and then all we're doing is we're just taking lines from a true basically each one of the points that we need to find in our new enlarged shape okay so I'm just gonna go vertically across from that point that we just found because again they're gonna stay parallel once it gets enlarged and I'm gonna take um, where our this is our cylinder shape again. This is what we are basically drawing up above. Um, I'm gonna take where that cylinder hits that horizontal line now and go across there like so. And that will give us our new thickness of our cylinder. And then gonna take the tops of the cylinder as well. Um, so that will give us our cylinder finished out. So vertical lines in like so. 
and then a horizontal line across and that's going to give us the new size of the cylinder once it's been enlarged okay so i can finish this part out and put in my little notch here put in my tops of my uh, cylinder should have carried that line on below um, down through my cylinder but should look no worries at all um vertical parts for our cylinder that's them all done and then the last thing we need is this angled line now this angled line will stay exactly bang on that angled line it's not going to change trajectory or anything like that so all we have to do is just continue it on and where it hits that horizontal line that we drew initially will give us the size of our new shape okay so i'm just going to go heavy across there keep going through my drawn and that's our horizontal line drawn in and then finish off our um, shape and as I said I should have went horizontally across in front of that cylinder but say la vie. So that's your enlargement done. It's a fairly straightforward question um, and it can be quite easy once you practice them out a couple of times. So that's that page done and um, we're going to move on to our next page now and again that will continue in our next video. We'll chat you then. Cheers.